This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week we're going to be asking how dry is Home Depot and Lowe's lumber? Specifically, how dry are their kiln-dried 2x4s and 2x6s? Normally, a YouTube video like this, they go into a couple minutes of the tools they used, a couple minutes of the process they did, a couple minutes of the why they're doing this process, and I think those are all really good, valid things, and that's why I'm going to cover all those after I get into the results, because a lot of you are going to be here just to find out how dry the wood actually is. So that's what I'm going to get into here first. I'll start with the Home Depot results first, and you should be aware that Home Depot and Lowe's don't grow trees. They don't have sawmills. What they do is they purchase their lumber from an independent sawmill in your local area. So your results are definitely going to be different than mine, and that'll be fairly evident when I explain the results that I found from my different locations of Home Depot and Lowe's. So what I did was I took 10 2x4s and 10 2x6s from each location, took a measurement about every 12 inches, avoiding any knots or rough spots, and then took the overall average of that lot. So when I say the average for the dowels, two by sixes means the overall average out of all of those measurements on all the two by sixes, and then the overall average on all the two by fours. So the highest one I found was the dowels, Oregon, and that was an average of 22.6% for the two by sixes, which is crazy high if you're gonna actually talk about building furniture for indoors with this. The lowest one I found was in Bend, which is Central Oregon, not super surprising, and that was an average of 9.6%, and that was also for 2x6s. Generally, across the board, the 2x4s seem to be a little bit drier than the 2x6s. The only location was actually Bend, where the 2x4s averaged 15%. So, if you want a quick answer, the overall average was 14.3% across all the Lowe's and Home Depots, but that varied a lot. Um, another one was 14% for the 14.4, as I mentioned, in Bend. In Tigard, there was 12.6 and 13.3% for 2x4s and 2x6s. As far as the lows in Tigard, again, just a couple miles from the Home Depot one, their 2x6s were 18.9% and their 2x4s were 12.6%. So not a lot of consistency. And the range for this went all the way from 32%, which is as high as my moisture meter reads, so it's actually probably over 32%, down to, I believe, 7% was the lowest one I found. So that's particularly concerning if you were going to build with this because you wouldn't want a 30% piece joined up with a 7% because they're going to crack and split for sure. So let's talk about the tools I used for this. And what I used was my new moisture meter. And this is the Orion 950, which is the biggest, baddest, best moisture meter on the market today. It's brand new. It has a bunch of new features that uh, no other moisture meter, to my knowledge, has ever had before. And we'll get into some of those details here in a little bit. But first I want to explain exactly what it is. And it is a pinless moisture meter, which is a pin moisture meter has two sharp little pins like this. You stick them into the wood and it gives you a reading. Sounds great because this will only cost like 15, 20 bucks. Only problem is it puts holes in your wood and it only measures that first 16th of an inch, 32nd of an inch. And I've found that to be wildly different in my readings now that I have this one, which goes three quarters of an inch down. So also doesn't leave holes. Generally, I think I've done some tests with this where it'll show 8 or 9%. I'll put this on there and it'll be like 15 or 16%. So it can definitely make the difference between using a piece or not using a piece or if it's dry enough to, to work with at this point. The Orion isn't limited to just that deep sensing. It also has a shallow mode if you had, say, thinner boards. So it can have a quarter inch mode or a three quarter of an inch mode. And for doing these 2x4s and 2x6s, as you probably know, they measure an inch and a half, so three quarters of an inch was absolutely perfect because now you're going to get the very deepest, wettest part of the wood. And what I did is I propped them up. You need a slight air gap since it is sending signals down into the wood. So I propped it up on two by fours generally on my tailgate because I was doing these measurements in the Home Depot or Lowe's parking lot. Propped it up, took my readings every 12 inches. You want to avoid knots or soft spots, excuse me, not soft spots, knots or rough patches because those will affect how this sensor reads on there. One of the really cool things about this Orion moisture meter is it has some features I've never seen on any other moisture meters. One of those is the when you take the moisture content of the wood, it doesn't just give you that reading. It'll also give you the relative humidity, the temperature, and the EMC. Now, relative humidity, temperature, not critical for furniture making, but the equilibrium moisture content, or EMC, is awesome because that way you know in your particular area, so here in Oregon, what I would do if I was building a coffee table for my living room is I'd go into the living room Take a reading just of the air, find out the equilibrium moisture content. Around here, it's going to be around 9%. So you know when your wood is 9%, it's at absolute equilibrium. And if you took a measurement in your shop, it may be 
12%, 14%, depending on how humid your particular area is. So Arizona might be 5 or 6%, Florida, I have no freaking idea, but this will tell you. So when you want to find your equilibrium moisture content, you know exactly how dry the wood should be. And this was cool for this test because it took a million different readings from different parts of the state, and it would give you a uh, reading of exactly what that EMC should be at your particular area. I will say that I did most of my readings outside because I was just doing this in the Home Depot and Lowe's parking lot and that's not the best place to find your EMC because you're not going to be building furniture for outside in the direct sun in a parking lot. So if you do want to find it, find it for the area that you're actually going to be putting the, the finished piece. And when I decided to do this project, I had originally planned I was just going to have a pen and paper. I was going to take a reading every foot like I mentioned write it down and then add everything up, divide, find my average moisture content for everything. Then I found out that the Orion has an automatic mode, which was awesome because it also syncs up to an app for my iPhone. I think they have it for Android and what other, other, whichever other devices too. So what I did was I pulled up my app, um, made a job title for the job. I would, you know, put the location tigered, whether it was a two by four or two by six start it and then you just start taking readings in automatic mode and as you move it across the board it will beep move it to the next spot beep move it to the next spot and you see it on your phone where it was taking not just the moisture content it's giving you the relative humidity temperature and emc for that particular reading so super cool feature when it's all done it gives you a pdf printout of the overall average of all the readings so made my job really easy and if you are a lumber supplier and you're doing you know maybe you're uh drying big lots of wood where you got to take 200 readings every week to see how dry it is to see if it's ready for the kiln they're ready to be taken out of the kiln they're ready to put into the kiln this is a really handy way to keep all of that documented I should mention that this is not cheap this goes for about 540 bucks now so it is not for your average DIYer you know when you can get something like this that is you know 15 20 bucks talk to the people at Wagner they're super nice and they said that they think that a bad moisture meter is better than no moisture meter. So if you're trying to you know, build a farmhouse table out of two by sixes and you're trying to spend $100 to build a whole table, obviously it's not realistic to spend 500 bucks on one of these. If you're a guy who's a woodworker and plans on being one for the next you know, 10 or 20 years, absolutely it's worth it because if you go and buy, say, a cool slab from Craigslist, I've had stuff air dried for six years, put this on there, found out it was, had trapped moisture from being dried improperly, it was over 30%. So that saved me from trying to send that out to a client with improperly dried wood. And for the Orion, what you do need to do is you need to program the exact species of wood you had, which I found was a little bit challenging because most of this wood is labeled white wood. And white wood is not a tree. And when I asked the people at Home Depot, they weren't super helpful because they didn't really know or care. And I don't blame them because this is designed for framing houses. It doesn't matter um, what tree you're using to frame houses as long as it's you know not pine. You want to have something good like dug fir. So I asked a few people, didn't get a lot of help, and I decided to call the timber supplier because I saw a Stinson written on there. So I decided I'd take a chance and, you know, didn't know who I'd get at Stinson. Um, called the guy, said, hey, I know it's a silly question, but I was wondering if you could happen to tell me what tree this is. And he immediately popped back with, he said, oh, absolutely. If you look about a third of the way up, there'll be a little stamp, and it'll probably say defer for you. And sure enough, I looked on there, every single 2x4 and 2x6 had a stamp where they said defer. Um, some said hemlock at a different supplier, but if you're curious what kind of tree your local Home Depot or Lowe's has, it's stamped right on the wood and the people at Home Depot probably don't even realize it. And the reason that matters is that dug fir has a different density than, say, ipe, which is, you know, a crazy hardwood. And so when this sends its signal down into it, it's going to um, collect its data based on the density of the wood. And that's why you have to get the exact tree species. There was one uh, Lowe's, I believe, that had fir slash hemlock. And so what I did was I gave the benefit of the doubt to that particular Lowe's. So I used the more conservative reading, which I believe was the dug fir. And the difference was only about 0.8% in moisture content, but I did want to kind of err on the side of giving them the credit towards the more dry wood. Orion is nice enough to give a little pamphlet with almost every wood species you could possibly work with and that particular density. So for Doug Fur, it was 0.48, and for the Hemlock, it was 0.45. And I think if you go up to something like a Walnut, it's 0.55, and the more dense, it'll just keep changing that number. So what does all this mean anyway? Why are we finding the moisture content of 2x4s and 2x6s? We're just framing houses, right? It doesn't matter if it's just a little bit green. It's going to dry out in no time. 
Well, if you're anything like me, you started out woodworking building with these two by fours and two by sixes because I couldn't afford a thousand or two thousand dollars for a big, beautiful slab of walnut. I built stuff out of two by fours and two by sixes because it's what I could afford. I built little aquarium stands and little nightstands for my dorm room back in the day. If you Google farmhouse table, you know, DIY farmhouse table on Pinterest, you're going to see 10 million results of different DIY farmhouse tables using two by fours, two by sixes, two by twelves. And I'm not saying don't build with this stuff. I'm saying absolutely do build with it. It's a great, fun way to get into woodworking where you can build a dining table for, you know, 80 bucks, which good luck doing that with walnut. What I want to do is kind of give you the tools to have the best results with it. And one thing I decided to test out was I took the wettest 2x6 of all the ones I sampled. It was from the Dalles. It was reading 32%, which, like I said, is probably over 32% since the meter only goes up that high. And I decided to just set it in the shade in, the side, in my side yard. And it's been about three weeks, and now it's reading 16%. So if you do want to build with these 2x4s, 2x6s, and you can't afford, you know, 540 bucks for a moisture meter because you're trying to spend $100 to build a whole table. I totally understand. And even if you buy one of these, you can't necessarily trust what it's giving you because it's only on the surface. What I recommend is set it inside for a month. You know, if you have a nice dry shop, if it's summertime, set it in the shade out, outdoors. You can give it a month. Two months, I would feel really comfortable with it. And if you want to absolutely make sure, if you decide that, hey, I don't want to take any chances, I don't want this to warp, I want a nice perfectly flat table, I don't want it rustic and reclaimed, good investment to purchase a moisture meter, not necessary. So give yourself three weeks to a month. If you can really go a whole, you know, two months, if you want to set it in your attic with a fan on it, that's going to really supercharge it. But set it inside for a couple, couple weeks to a month, maybe two months, and you're going to have a much better chance of getting good results for your DIY farmhouse table or anything else you want to build with 2x4s or 2x6s. I think it's important to note that these lumber suppliers aren't pretending to drive this lumber down to 9%. Around here, they're governed by the WWPA, and if you get on their website, you can learn a lot. You can find out specifically what all of these stamps mean, and they'll also tell you specifically what kiln-dried means to be certified by them. And what we were working with was the S-Dry KD, which states a maximum moisture content of 19%. And as we saw in our tests, uh, quite a few boards were over that 19%, but for the most part, they were pretty close. I am not technologically gifted. When I was able to tie this moisture meter to the app provided, I was so proud of myself. I told my wife and she basically patted me on the head and said, good job, but I was still proud of myself. That said, it should say a lot that I was able to create and design my entire website myself with the help of Squarespace. Because not only is it DIY friendly, it provides apps so you can track your progress. You can see, am I doing better this month or was I doing better last month? And maybe make the appropriate changes to try to keep it on the upward swing. And they'll also tell you where your traffic's coming from. So you know if it's coming from desktop or mobile sites, which is actually really useful because I don't know if you've ever gotten on a website that was designed for desktop, but you're on your iPhone and the print is tiny and you're having to scroll back and forth and nothing looks right. All of Squarespace's websites automatically format to the correct form, whether it should be on a mobile or a desktop. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. And if you have any questions about building with 2x4s or 2x6s, I have an embarrassing amount of experience building with both of those. So please feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm pretty good about responding to every one of those. So thanks so much for watching this week's video and have a great day. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to DIY your own website, go to squarespace.com forward slash blacktail studio to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.